100% be down with that. Oh my god, that would be so funny. Are you yeah. kidding me right I now? I mean, yeah. I mean, that, that I'd maybe. yeah. Cosplay metal. I have a feeling LARP that we, we, this isn't the first time, the only time LARP ma- LARPing is going to come up. In, Absolutely in not. Though this is going to come up again. Yeah. Why is there no Harry Potter metal? Is what I would like to know no, personally no, no. in my own. Well, life. when those kids who fell in love with those books get old enough to start playing metal, I think no, we're in for a treat. No, but they are though. They're for sure like. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Banger Films. We're in the Banger Bar yet again for another episode of Lock Horns, where each week we tackle. The heavy metal family tree, which we created way back in 2004 for our first film, Metal A Headbanger's Journey. I want to tell you that the genre we're tackling today is actually not on the chart currently, and that is folk metal. We've been getting a lot of audience response over the past few weeks telling us that we need to talk about this. Before I go any further, I want to remind everyone that please subscribe to Banger TV. We're trying to build the first international digital all-metal channel, so please help us make that happen by subscribing. With me in the studio today is none other than Natalie Zed. Hello, Natalie. Hello, hello. Natalie is a well-respected journalist here in Toronto and master of all things folk metal. Oh, wow. I you like this stuff. I love this stuff. I, I super do. Um, I have uh, I have a deep soft spot for dorky things. Um, there's been a lot of LARPing in my past and present, if I'm super honest with myself. I have never LARPed. Oh, really? But maybe there's a first for everything. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. should run around in the forest and pretend to murder your friends. It's and, super fun. And do you listen to this while you LARP? or Occasionally. Occasionally. D- depending on the, the style and, and variety and yeah. theme of the LARP sometimes. But in all seriousness, I think this yeah. is a legitimate discussion today. I absolutely. I think this is clearly a genre that has become a genre mm-hmm. over the last 10 years. Longer, uh, longer yeah. for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like ban- bands like St- Skyclad have been around mm-hmm. since the 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely something that uh, over the last 10, maybe 15 years has risen in popularity mm-hmm. even more. Um, folk metal shows uh, have an incredible band draw mm-hmm. um, and a, you know, a very specific sort of like intensity and emotion and community yeah. that sort of happens around that. They're very much like bands that thrive in a live environment. Lots um, of singing along. Lots of singing along, lots of stirring choruses, um, and lots of audience participation. We'll resist getting into too many details. Uh, The most important thing I want to mention is that we want you to be involved in what we're doing here. As we've done before, as we'll do today, we want you to tell us what you think. What do you think about folk metal as a genre? What do you think about the bands that we've actually already sort of added? Um, what's your opinion on other bands that should be included or not included? Mm-hmm. To some houseworking. Off camera, we have Lisa Latasur, our producer, and when we hear this sound, it means we, usually me, has to <laughs> shut up and move on to the next thing. Probably Thank you, too. Lisa. This week, we have something unique. Earlier this year, we did an interview with the folk metal band and Sephirum mm-hmm. here in Toronto before their show at the Opera House, and I actually asked them about folk metal, what it is, and where their influences come from. So to kick things off, let's check out in Sephirum. You know, we created a few years ago what we called the heavy metal family tree, mm-hmm. which is this big thing that connects all the different subgenres of okay. metal. Folk metal, however, is not mm. on there. And many people have told us that <laughs> that needs to change. Okay. So I want to ask you, you know, people often call your music yeah. folk metal, and oh. I wanted to know what what that means to you. What is folk metal to you? Our rules. I can only speak on behalf of our band. Yeah. Are in like melodic death metal, yeah. like old Dark Tranquility, old Amorphis, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, the founder of the band, Marcus, he was really, he still is, really into folk music. Yeah. That's where it all started. Right. Yeah, you should add it to the tree. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Definitely. The average person would say folk music and metal, like, they seem like worlds apart. Uh, I would guess it's, it's the, uh, the melody yeah. in, in the music, you mm-hmm. know. There isn't that much, like, if we go, like, death metal, you know. You got some riffs over there, you have some melody in it, but an average person probably don't hear that melody. Mm-hmm. But on on our music, it's on top of everything. So And right. you can sing along. I think that's also something really cool in our show. You know, people sing the melodies. Yeah. You know, like really 
heavy metal thing going on in the background, but you have still the melody on the top, yeah. so yeah. you can still yeah. kind of... Yeah. There's something to hang on to. We've got... There we go. That was a first, and it's rough here in the banger bar, doing things as they <laughs> come. Natalie, interesting chat there with the mm -hmm. Insiferum guys. Um, I guess there's a couple important things there. One, they're they're drawing on, um, you know, they talked about Amorphous and mm -hmm. some early Opeth records yes. that had a bit of a folk vibe. What's mm -hmm. your thought on that? Um, so I, I actually agree quite a bit with the way that they um, sort of characterize the definition of folk metal mm -hmm. there, um, both in sort of its character. Uh, I think, again, they refer to the community, the sort of the, 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 the sing-along aspect mm -hmm. to it, the mm -hmm. sort of like stirring choruses and the, you know, the, that, that kind of um, the way that music calls to the audience to really right. participate in it, absolutely. Um, they also talked about, and I think that this is the most crucial aspect to what defines folk metal and maybe in opposition to some genres that are related to it, mm -hmm. um, but metal that draws upon um, traditional songs mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and traditional melodies, um, takes them, deconstructs them, and puts them on top of heavy metal song structures. Right. And that's really the formula that makes any sort of folk metal work. Very cool. Um, and I think we just to build on what they're mm -hmm. saying, if we're going to kind of, we want to start today with a sort of understanding of what yes. we can consider to be folk metal. Mm -hmm. Another element, of course, is the lyrics and yes. the the, the themes and the imagery of the music mm -hmm. very much drawing on mythology, particularly yes. Northern and Western uh, European mythology. Uh, tell me about that. For sure. Well, I, it really depends on where that particular folk metal band originates, mm -hmm. or at least what culture they are they are drawing from and calling to. Um, so a you know a Nordic or Scandinavian folk metal band is going to sound very different, and it's going to have very very different themes and images and narratives in that music um, than a band from the Middle East mm -hmm. or a band from Africa or any other sort of place in the world so it, because it's really about like the formula of taking those songs pulling them apart and making right. something out of them um, so but but the the types of stories um, do tend to be this in, the right. same and that they're these big like epic quests and mythological structures yeah. and and uh, you know sort of the stories that inform the basis of whatever yeah. culture that music comes from at the risk of getting long in the tooth which I often am <laughs> uh, well that's what I find interesting about folk metal I mean originally 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 metal was really not about anywhere particular right. in terms of geography or culture mm -hmm. or region. And it seems as though with folk metal and, you know, to some extent other genres, it's that has become increasingly a part of this music. I don't right. know if we can answer the big question sure. as to why that's happening, but mm -hmm. it always seemed there is this harmony between metal and, and geography that seems to be happening. Absolutely. And, and again, I think it, it really depends on um, what culture and what um, what influences that right. band is drawing from. Right. Right. Um, and in a lot of cases, it happens to be like what you know, the origin point, like if, you know, a, a, if a band is from, um, you know, a, a band is from Britain, they're mm -hmm. going to draw on the sort of like pagan tradition of mm -hmm. that, like that country and that culture. Of course, you have bands too, like Ex Deo, mm -hmm. right, um, who, who uh, you know, are, don't necessarily like, who are, or are a Canadian band, right. um, but they draw on um, all the imagery of ancient Rome for mm -hmm. their music too. So right. sometimes it's a matter of adopting or drawing from a culture Cheaters. as well. <laughs> <laughs> totally. You don't hear a lot of Tim Hortons, you mean, in folk metal from Canada? What's going on? Let's hockey celebrate is hockey. The, why is hockey metal not a genre? Yeah, the totally. metal version of Stomp and Tom. <laughs> Moving on, we've been belled by Lisa. Mm -hmm. Prior to today, yes. we got a lot of comments from, from, from folks mm -hmm. uh, on the internet who <laughs> recommended that we add some bands, and we tend to agree. So we've got the ball rolling here with Skyclad, Moon Sorrow, and Sephirum, who we've heard from in the clip, mm -hmm. Tear from the Faroe Islands, and Fintroll as well. Um, and Sam, I just, yes. uh, we've had some comments come in from people, general comments about folk metal okay. and mm -hmm. what we should or maybe shouldn't be talking about today okay. cool. um, that have been interesting, like uh, from these people here. Okay, um, should we read some of these? We've got Tiago Queri Querios is back from Portugal. Right. Hello again this week. Um, we are hearing that I guess we should make a drinking game in this show. When the <laughs> bell rings, everyone gets a vodka or rum shot. What about that? 
Uh, come on down, Tiago. But mm -hmm. I, I think it actually should be a clay mug of mead, probably, oh, would be yeah, more fitting. You, I should have a drinking horn right we now. We should have drinking horns. We are sadly lacking in mm -hmm. accessories. We're sorry, Shame. Tiago. I should have brought mine. You should have told me. We've got another comment here from Johannes Erlingson. Are you going to include the subgenres mm, too? I'm talking about medieval metal and Celtic metal, and I think you have to watch out what is put in the genre right. because I have always had the feeling that there's a thin line between folk, Viking, and pagan metal. What do you think? So Kelly? actually I have I have uh, opinions about this that are fairly fully formed as I do on most topics. <laughs> so um, the thing about, I, I do think there is a line between mm -hmm. pagan metal, Viking metal, and folk metal. Um, like I mentioned before, I think what defines folk metal for me is taking those traditional melodies or songs and putting them on top of metal structures. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of Viking metal um, isn't necessarily drawing upon the traditional songs of a particular culture. Right. It's more like what would happen if Vikings had uh, electric guitars, right. uh, which trust me is the best thing in the entire world. Or and it, and very dangerous. Or I'm very dangerous, sure. but definitely something that like appears to me, appeals to me a mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that there's a fine difference there. And right. so I think that when a lot of the subgenres that come up, um, I, Grunge Bork, another grunge, comment. Grunge Book. Grunge Book, sorry. Also um, brings this up in, in this comment uh, saying that, you know, please don't fall into the trap of thinking that themes or gimmicks are actual musical genres. There are no such thing as pirate metal, troll metal, medieval metal, or Viking metal. Well, obviously saying that these things don't exist is not true because they, mm -hmm. they, they do. Um, but in terms of like whether they fall under the umbrella of folk metal, mm -hmm. I do disagree with right. that. Like, okay. I, I don't think necessarily that they do because, say, uh, like a you know a, a pirate metal band, for example, isn't there. Are, if they, when they take a traditional sea shanty, yes. for example, and make a as metal song does. as yeah. one is <laughs> as want one must to do, take a sea shanty really, and metalize it. Of course, it's just it's right there. It's <laughs> waiting the opportunity. Um, in that case, I think that would be an example of like a folk metal impulse. Right. Um, when it's a song about pirates that yep. is a heavy metal song, right. I think something different is happening. Right. Um, so a band like Fintroll, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. which uh, they absolutely have songs that do take traditional structures, yeah. put them on top of metal, they do that. They're also fully cosplaying as trolls, yep. right? And, yes. and fully perform the act of this is what would happen right. if trolls made heavy that metal. That is the first time the phrase cross-playing as trolls Cosplay. has ever <laughs> been uttered on live television. What about pagan mm. metal? Are you, is mm. this sort of another right. splintering of folk metal that maybe is, uh, doesn't have a lot of currency? Well, it, it, it can be, uh -huh. but I think that pagan metal is actually closer to the origin point of folk metal. So mm. when you get into like, like a band, uh, like Skyclad, for example, I think today um, would end up falling into that category right, because, okay. uh, because just because of the sort of like the themes and textures that they're dealing right. with. So um, maybe so, if I may jump in and sort sure. of offer a bit of a ruling, I think sure. for today, given that we're adding, we are potentially adding a new subgenre that we're right. not going into the sub subgenres fair. of folk metal totally for today. Fair. Let's yeah. start with this for now. I, I We want to hear what else is going on out there mm -hmm. in um, internet land. Book v. Larhoven argues okay. one can make a case for putting Led Zeppelin mm. on top of the list for bringing massive folk influence to hard rock and from there we can make our way to Rainbow and eventually to Sky Clash. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I think there's a point at which um, I, I don't disagree with this genealogy mm -hmm. um, but I do think you have to pick a starting point where something different has happened. Yeah. And for sure, like if you, it, like Zeppelin and Rainbow are, are clear precursors to something like Skyclad. Yeah. Um, but Skyclad is, uh, whereas in both of those bands, and particularly I think in Rainbow, there are elements yeah. of that and that's sort of taking shape. That's Skyclad's whole bag, right? I that think, sort of defines yeah. them as a band and what that's they're right. doing. So I think that because that is happening, that's where the origin point of the genre really can be. I done. would agree, and that's that's tended to be what we've done with the other subgenres okay. where mm -hmm. we try to define origin points. Is it, It's the point at which a band's sound, mm -hmm. style, lyrical approach, aesthetic, what it might, whatever it might be, becomes mm -hmm. overwhelmingly folk metal yes. or overwhelmingly death metal. Yes. Uh, because, you know, it's all got to come from somewhere and people have dabbled in the past. Makes sense. We got a long comment here from Marco Velasquez. Velasquez. Mm -hmm. Skyclad needs to be at the top of the list. Martin Walkier gives us 
us hints of it in UK thrash band Sabbath, but he wanted to stretch what they already had done even further, yeah. adding a fiddler, featured songs on the environment, social upheavals, and so, wow, write the dissertation, Marco, good job. <laughs> yeah. uh, Self-awareness through the pagan lens, yeah. through the pagan lens, we should rename mm -hmm. the show. If Martin could hire Ian Anderson to play flute, he would have. They dress like warriors slash pagan gypsies as well. I hope Skyclad gets its well-deserved recognition as the forefathers of folk metal. Guess what? Guess what? You got your wish today. Day, so that's pretty great. Congratulations, Marco. Christmas came early for you. <laughs> Benjamin Balduck, Skyclad. The Wittershins Jig is the first folk metal song. You know this song? Ooh, Can you do the Wittershins Jig? Absolutely not, under no circumstances. <laughs> not sober, anyway. My God. Corthon Venom, Skyclad are probably the first folk band. Great, we're getting some consensus. And lastly, Thomas Lord Predary Christie. Wow. Hmm. A genuine Skyclad Lord, you say. created the genre sand. Give them the respect they deserve. Well, well I owe it all to you, Natalie. <laughs> Talk about this, give us the Coles notes on Skyclad. Why should we care so much? So, I mean, you should care about Skyclad Sky because they're awesome <laughs> to begin with. Fair enough. Um, but, but really, they, um, they were the first band to sort of take the, um, the, the sort of, um, the spookiness and the and and all of the sort of like witchy wonderful um, pagan elements that mm -hmm. are sort of swirling around in a lot of in a lot of older um, English music yeah, yeah. Uh, the, so that sort of pre-Christian England the like yeah. the like old ghost populated fairy populated England right. um, and start doing something with that in terms of aggressive music. I love um, your phrase witchy and wonderful. I think we've already come up with more catchphrases today than <laughs> all the other discussions combined. I'm a, unfortunately a poet <laughs> in my other life. Yes, Lisa. I'm interrupting with an interesting uh, development. Oh, something ooh, we, development, oh something we had not thought of. Uh -huh. Bathory. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, hmm. so interesting. Bathory, what do we say about Bathory? Bathory is the mothership to a lot of things. I mean, a lot of people credit it Bathory is. with being the first or one of the first black metal bands, rightly so. Up out there, for Death sure. Death metal as well. You know, Quarthon also use very kind of atmospheric mm -hmm. sounds, mm -hmm. electronic sounds in, yep. in, in the early uh, Bathory music. Folk metal, however, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I for sure would be willing to entertain arguments that specific Bathory tracks are folk metal tracks. For sure. Under unquestionably. Yep. Um, is their whole bag folk metal? Yeah. No, no. I disagree. I think they have a very important role mm -hmm. in the origin origins of the genre. For sure. 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 Absolutely. Um, I think that I think that they're heavily influential on the genre. Yeah. Are they? How, can you call them a folk metal band? That doesn't feel like that. Yeah. That that doesn't feel like I'm correct to me. Sometimes with these bands, I find it's helpful to look from the present and looking back. And I think we could make sure. the argument that Ath actually Bathory went on to influence more bands from other subgenres than they did from folk metal. Absolutely. I mean, there would be no black metal if it wasn't, if it wasn't for, for Bathory. the first couple of Bathory records. And mm -hmm. you know, if we do even for a moment entertain the idea of there being Viking metal, we could make a case that Bathory is the first Viking metal band. Unquestionably. Folk metal, I'm not so sure. sure. To me, there just isn't enough folky elements, being it mm -hmm. instrumentation or sure. lyrics or, or what have you. I agree with you, and I would be very, very comfortable acknowledging them again as like a profound influence on their genre. Yep. And I probably would be more comfortable drawing that line a bit more directly in the Viking metal yep. direction. Yep. Yep. But if we're just talking folk metal, I, I think that this is the cutoff, where right. I'm comfortable with the cutoff being where it is. Okay, sure. good. Prior to uh, today, uh -huh. you pre-selected some additional bands I did. that needed to be added to the folk metal chart, more mm -hmm. than what we already have here. Yes. Tell me the first of those bands. Which band do you think needs to be added? The first of those bands is Primor Primordial. Okay. Um, extreme metal band from, uh, do I get to put it on? Is this you very get to exciting? put it on. Oh my god, this is so exciting. Ma'am. Oh. Um, so generally acknowledged as an extreme metal slash folk metal band yep. from Ireland. Yep. Um, and uh, Primordial, um, I think, need to be on there um, because they're so devoted to their extreme metal roots mm -hmm. as much as they are um, the sort of Irish folk music influence okay. that comes they're into their music. The they really yeah. are. And, I, yeah. and, they, and they have done that 
well and consistently yep. for a lot of their career. Right. Um, they also are um, really, really deeply influenced by um, the stories mm -hmm. and narratives mm -hmm. of the cultures that they draw on, which which are, you know, and I think they do that incredibly well. I'm yep. always very moved uh, by the stories in their music. Mm -hmm. um, and, and folk metal to me is all about stories. Well, you've got some allies out there. Thomas yes. Proskow says primordial, yes. <laughs> and Garapatero España says primordial and Windier. Oh, windier is an excellent suggestion. So I know we're a little mm, bit later. We're going to mm, be adding. Mm, mm. We're going to be adding here. So uh, so I'm really happy to see that suggestion. And for all of sure. a sudden, gr uh, grunge book very active today. Goddamn <laughs> primordial. Hell yes. I also see David Noddle giving a yes to primordial. So hello, hurrah for that. Looks Love like the we... name David Noddle. Yeah. <laughs> This Good very, job with the name, pretty David. excellent. Okay, in addition to Primordial, there yes. was one other band that there you is. felt very strongly needed to be added. Who is that? And that band is Orphan Land. Okay. Um, so again, I think that uh, there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, again, they're awesome. Uh, and again, like really do uh, an incredible job um, combining um, really intense, unquestionably heavy metal music yeah. um, with extremely um, rich, well thought out uh, mm -hmm. folk instrumentation. Yeah. Um, what makes Orphan Land particularly interesting, a lot of, a lot of the bands that we, we talk about and a lot of the bands that tend to be talked about um, around folk metal tend to be either um, British, anywhere in the British Isles, yep. um, tend to be Scandinavian yep. in some way, yep. um, or you know, sort of, sort of somewhere from that part of the world. Yep. And, and quite frankly, there's incredible folk metal music coming out of the Middle East right now. Yep. Orphan Land definitely yeah. falls under that category, and the the tone and texture and character of the music is completely different. Yeah. Um, but the structure and the way it is built is yeah. the same, yeah. and that's something I love about this genre so much is that yeah. you can have examples that are so different in character because of where the music comes from and the way those sorts of elements are combined. Yep. So a band like Orphan Land, who have been around for a really long time, who have um, who are, are exceptionally talented yep. and do something unique and very well, very I, much I would agree with you. List. In 2006, when we made our second film, Global mm -hmm. Metal, we went to Israel yes. and featured Orphan Land in that segment. And, and speaking personally, I mean, it was a pretty powerful experience yeah, for me, actually for the first time going to that part of the world but not only that but meeting a metal band of all genres that was doing something unique with their music that was actually bringing together people of different religious political ethnic backgrounds mm -hmm. um, they were one of the my understanding at the time and maybe it's changed now but um, they were one of the few Isra Israeli bands to mm -hmm. play in, in in Arabic countries and at Very that cool. time of course that was uh, it had never been done before and of course they've gone on and had documentaries made about their own right. career so fascinating band mm -hmm. uh, but it's time to move on Lisa what do we want to do next we're getting a lot of traction on some other bands that haven't been mentioned yet okay. um, including Teresa's yes uh, I, I love Teresa's they're definitely right. in the sort of battle folk metal yep. category so and Markov Gatero Garopero yeah. España and Manut Drool 91 are all advocating <laughs> for Teresa. Tell incredible. me about this band, Teresa. So, uh, so Teresa are are a band that again are uh, are very influenced by. Um, they have a, they have a lot of like stirring, um, lo lots of like stories of great battles that they love to do. Um, they're 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 definitely one of those sort of like shields and face paint kind of yep. bands. Um, Thyrfing is another band in this sort of category. They definitely fit in the sort of Enciferum um, yep. group. Right. Um, but they are they're 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 really really great. They do they do a lot of those sort of um those like galloping rhythms yep. and really intense like riding off to battle with dig, the cavalry kind of deal. Which Steve Harris, which I have a serious serious soft spot for. Right um, now, I did see Windier yes. come up. Yeah, um, and they are they are uh, another sort of early originator yep. of, of this particular yep. genre that I would really, really like you to see up here. So up I would you absolutely, wanna, you wanna could do I, the, is that okay? Honest? Oh my God. Yeah, Windier, it's a big, fat, sharpie. Windier, we are adding to the chart. 
I think you bring up something really interesting, and it's a bit of a philosophical point. That sure. We spent more time today talking about stories yes. than any other subgenre, and clearly that's something that's very important to these bands. Absolutely. There are stories to tell, mm -hmm. whereas in a lot of metal, it's just about abstract imagery and, you know, some sort of, it's just for its sort of uh, oblique poetry. Sometimes. Well, there's a lot of wizards and dragons, too, uh, to be yeah. fair. Let's not yeah. forget the wizards and dragons. But but I do think that, so, so folk metal we need to kind of look at the origin of that word, right? Mm -hmm. Of the folk, right? Mm -hmm. These are the the stories or the the songs that are being drawn on um, are a form of storytelling. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, whether that's a myth or a, or a legend or the story of a great warrior yep. or, or an important historical event, um, a lot of these folk songs um, are, are attempts to keep narratives alive over time. Yep. So they're mnemonic devices, right? So a thing happens, you sing a song about it so that yep. generations in the future, you remember these yep. things. And a lot of the cultures that are being drawn upon are like way earlier iterations of cultures or cultures yeah. that are or that have died that yeah. they're you know we know we no longer have like living um, you know like sages and mm -hmm. and storytellers and bards walking around to tell, to tell these sorts of stories we should have some bards we should you should for sure have, a, have if I could have a bard you following bring around an important point amazing. because I think people are surprised <laughs> that folk and metal would go together but I think you've yeah. hit on something I think from the outside metal appears to be something that is exclusionary but in fact mm -hmm. it is very much a genre that is about belonging and community yes. and folk Deeply. is the same so maybe that's why we see such harmony it is. And, Between and these two genres. It's, it's entirely possible. And maybe why this is such a community-oriented yep. genre as well. There you go. Lisa, mm -hmm. we've ignored you. What do well, we need to no, do? Well, no, you've been ignoring <laughs> the following people. Okay, okay the cyanide, sorry, I'm sorry. The cyanide smoker. Good name. I swear I'm going to jump <laughs> through my damn screen and put a Waylander magnet up there, up there, my goddamn self. I almost I said something see, different. Amazing. Uh, Wolfdog666 is also making a case for Alveity. Which I am inclined to agree with oh. quite a bit. Okay. Um, okay. And of course, uh, Corpic Lonnie is okay. getting a lot of love right now. I see. Right. What? What about Waylander? Hmm. You know, <sighs> Waylander. Do you know their music well enough to comment? You know, probably I don't. Yeah, I'm me gonna neither. I'm gonna admit to some some ignorance okay, here okay. that that's uh, that they're not something somebody I'm super super familiar with. So do you want to add um, a couple of bands there? I would like uh, to add Elevati. Okay. I'd like to add Elevati. Me yeah. or you? Oh, let's let do the Sharpie. Sure. And Corporate Klein, you've been talking about already. You expressed yes. fairly emphatically near the beginning that this was a band that should be added. I think. Uh, what do I you think, think that, about that? Mm, Is that are we gonna are we gonna make the bold move? Are we gonna and add make them to the, the chart? Battle, a bold move? See, like, and I'm I could probably be roasted for this. I acknowledge that, but I kind of think that um, they're obviously not identical bands. But I do feel like Alveity is perhaps a better example mm -hmm. of something that Corpic Lonnie is also doing. Like I don't, they're okay. obviously not identical. They don't occupy exactly the same space. Right. Um, but I would make a harder argument for Elveity than I would for Corpiclani. So right. because we have limited space here. Okay, we've got a few more cars to go, but okay. Rutger Vandermeer says, if you guys don't add Corpiclani, <laughs> we might have to invade Canada Viking oh, style. Oh man. Bring it on, Vandermeer. Uh, <laughs> well, there's some strong feelings out there. Is this a band yeah, well. who's catalog in your opinion hasn't been consistently folk enough or that they're just not doing mm. it well enough? Possibly that their quality has slipped oh. over the last few records. Some quality control here with Zed. A little bit of quality Zed. control issues. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean like, I, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love going to a Corpic Lani show in my utila kilt as much as everybody else does. Who doesn't? Uh, who doesn't? But uh, I, I, mm, I'm, I hesitate. Okay, I Andrew hesitate. Penner, Corpic Lani set aside and prepare to be invaded by mm. the Dutch, maybe <laughs> I, if I get it Vandermeer correctly. Incredible. Andrew Penner, Thonic. We oh. need more Asian bands on here. Yes. This is actually a really good point. No, I agree with this. Yeah. I agree with this for sure. Thonic are great. Okay. Um, yeah. And are doing, doing a, again, a totally different interpretation of their genre. I'd be very happy to see them up here okay. on this board. Yeah, yeah. I got to get the spelling right here. It's a, tr it's a tough one. Tell us about Thonic's music for those that don't know it. So uh, so, uh, so Thonic, uh, Thonic's music um, are, are a lot of these bands, something that I like that they do, a lot of these bands tend to draw on um, 
like do a lot of doom or do a lot of like traditional metal mm -hmm. and that sort of is the access mm -hmm. point yeah. Um, yeah. whereas their access point is or the like the, the sort of traditional Asian song structures that they're putting on top mm -hmm. uh, is is much more death metal-y mm -hmm. and I really really like that fusion mm -hmm. I like how sort of like dark and intense the music the right. music result like results from that yep. fusion so yep. like for sure I'm very very happy well, you got some supporters out there yes, Soren sorry. Markov agrees so and the cyanide smoker is back to say that Thonic is, is awesome I, another observation here uh -huh. is that this is quite international this list of bands and maybe by virtue of the fact mm -hmm. that it is folk metal mm -hmm. we're seeing I mean I think we're seeing the first Asian band we're seeing yep. the first definitely the first band from the Middle East Definitely the first band and from one the of the Faroe few Islands. from the Fair Islands population of five, yeah. and I think they're all in <laughs> tier, uh, that this is clearly a music that's tapping into, yes. obviously, local tales mm -hmm. and local history, so Absolutely. I guess it makes sense. Melissa Hoare, I am, uh, am I the only one <laughs> loving Natalie's Satan knitwear? Thank Let's you. Let's have a shout out for the Satan knitwear. Thank you very much. It's Christmas or something. This is my Christmas sweater. It's not very folky, but it's definitely it's metal. It is. Well done. Well done. It's, it's influ. It's a. It's a Bathory inspired, <laughs> folk, kind of vein of folk metal. That's right. Metal that's sweater. right. So Thank for you. all those people who we ixnay Bathory on, at least we've got a satanic sweater <laughs> I mean, in the bar. It, there was no ixnay. It was more of a positional thing. Yeah, to yeah. be fair. So Canadian, mm -hmm. Natalie oh, said. Oh, this is super interesting. Lisa, what do we got? Samrat Saha. In India, we have a genre called Vedic or Vedic metal, i.e., the lyrics are from Vedas, Hindu mm -hmm. religious book. Do you consider that them as folk metal? That is super interesting. Like, uh, I guess the question is, can folk metal come from anywhere? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. I'm not particularly familiar with this mm -hmm. subgenre. I'm totally fascinated to have learned this fact. This is yeah. super, super cool for me. Well, I think um, uh, maybe the point is that, yes, folk metal can be from anywhere, but mm -hmm. just because you're from anywhere doesn't yes. make you folk metal because True. when we went to you know when we made it back to global metal mm -hmm. um you know we traveled around the world we went to many different countries on different continents and there was always a mixture of bands that were sounding very north american or very european mm -hmm. uh, might be doing some sort of twist on it but right. but but nothing terribly unique and then you get these bands that are undeniably tapping into something local. I'm thinking of, you know, the great Chinese band Tang Dynasty oh, were yes, singing absolutely. about, uh, you know, very old Chinese mm -hmm. uh, uh, tales. Yeah, so, for sure. So um, it seems to be there's a bit of both, but clearly we have to do our research on Vedic metal. On Vedic metal, metal absolutely, Thank but you. I think for sure. Um, as well, there's an incredibly rich Slavic folk metal tradition right. too. So like yeah. band, bands like Arcona, for example, right. sort yeah. of draw upon this. And again, you get a very, very different character from yeah. the music. Here's a new comment too, which looks interesting. Oh. Hari Desikachari, Tengar Cavalry. I love the crap out of this band. If so, you want more Asian bands similar to Thonic, they're the only band really mixing Mongolian folk. And throat, throat singing. singing. And, all and throat singing. With yes. metal. Uh, yeah. I just discovered this band not very long ago, and I'm super, super excited right. about them. Right. Uh, they're very new on the scene, or at least they're new on the scene for me. Uh, they have, um, a few years ago, they put out a demo that they have just now like re-recorded mm -hmm. um, with a bit more of a budget. And the combination of throat singing and metal, I think, is up, like amazing and fascinating and comes off like super super well in terms of the family tree like we're yeah. talking about a band that's like just yeah. emerging right yeah. now yeah. Um, so I'm like I don't know if it sort of suits the board but I like huge bonus points for Tanger Calvary I think that the like that is not a culture we've right. seen sort of celebrated in this way before Absolutely. so I'm super pumped I about appreciate it. just this nature because we do not want to put on bands here that are just brand new and we don't know yet if they've made an impact or not sure. sure. however if we do we may stave off the invasion from uh, the uh, <laughs> Netherland True. Viking uh -huh. <laughs> Uh-huh. Fair. There right. we go. All it'll right. either it'll be like a Mongolian and Dutch Viking invasion and Incredible. we're doomed, quite yeah. frankly, uh, <laughs> here in the banger bar. Um, are there bands that you would add in addition to these that hasn't been mentioned yet today? Or are um, we do you think we're starting to get to a sort of definitive-ish list? Uh, we're getting close. Uh, I would, I would for sure like to see, um, you know, either like maybe, maybe a band, um, we talked about a band like Arcona, okay. yeah. uh, could be a great addition. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe possibly a, a band like, um, 
like Nile oh. might be a good choice. Bold, um, bold move. Or something, or uh, actually more like Melakesh might be a be might be something good um, example. a little bit more. Good example. Uh, just, just again, to sort of like. Great band, great band. Super love what they yeah, do yeah, and yeah. to sort of expand a little bit from there. Zach Scott, um, Natalie Zed, you're getting hung out to dry on this corporate Clanny <laughs> thing. I'm not letting this uh, corporate you may not get out of here alive. He's oh saying, my I'm God. not letting this corporate Clanny thing go, damn it. And it's in all caps. Wow, there's there's been a lot of corporate Clanny all, all caps. But uh, honestly, though, I'm going to I'm gonna ask you guys, are, are Einherger um, not better than Corpic Lani? Are, is Skalmold not better than Corpic Lani? Is Tharfing not better than Corpic Lani? So if we're, like, really, if we're going to start, you know, if we're, if we're going to do this, like, are you all advocate Falkenbach? Like, are, are we really saying that Corpic Lani is better than all of those bands I just listed that are awesome, by the way? I've spelt them probably incorrectly, but <laughs> I spelt a lot of A's just in there. by sure. virtue of repetition sure. and persistent from the Viking hordes. All right. We should at least put them under question mark mm -hmm. because there is some date. Falkenbach is coming. Yeah. Harbo Bimus, yeah. Falkenbach, and Eternus. At Eternus. Is also, I'd be happy to see Falkenbach on this list. All right. I'll there you go. Up. Boldly at them, up. Natalie Zed. Anybody else out there wants to add a band? Time is starting to run out on lock horns, so we want to hear what you have to say. Excuse me, folk metal and Nile? I don't know. This is a band that I know well. Obviously, I'm a big death metal and sure, thrash sure. metal fan. Melakesh and Nile are two fantastic bands mm -hmm. that have definitely been telling stories, yes. incorporating. I'm um, happy to be folk disagreed with on this. I and, mean, and I'm, yeah. I'm not super committed to the idea of them like as a folk. I don't. If if I was to say folk metal yeah. and and list Nile, like I agree that that's a weird choice. But I think we do need to like kind of just broaden our ideas right. in terms of like what can possibly fall under this category. I'd be much more comfortable putting Melakesh under there than I would Nile. Would to you? be fair. Well, we got two blank cards. Alestorm says Ron Green. Oh, Where's Alestorm? What other pirate go. metal fire folk? Is right. out there, true pioneer. True pioneer. So mm. I'm going to address the ale storm question. Please do. Because I think and then we, we, we may talked... create an ale storm later in the bar. We might. Yes. Uh, so we talked about this earlier. So I I think that um, ale storm have create have done folk metal tracks mm -hmm. when they have taken like a traditional sea shanty mm -hmm. for example plopped it on top of some metal and and created something new out of that like mm -hmm. absolutely that is a folk metal song um, when they're like we have electric guitars and a guitar and are singing about how awesome it is to be pirates that feel more that feels more like heavy metal pirate cosplay to me than folk metal yes so they're definitely in the sort of like Mm, Viking metal, like yeah. Roman centurion metal, like uh, kind of like steampunk musical equivalent mm. thing happening there. And because of that, they do not quite fit for me. I have a real hard time taking pirates and keytars seriously. So don't I get me wrong, it. I love the shit out of pirates and keytars. <laughs> Maybe but... we're making a, are we making a sonic judgment here? Mm. I mean, take bands like Nile and Melakesh. Sure. Overwhelmingly heavy, they're extreme metal yes. bands. Most of these bands, it's not only mm -hmm. imagery, themes, stories, right. instrumentation, but the music is, there's extreme elements, but it's not overwhelmingly extreme. It depends on the band for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm a personally drawn toward things that are heavier, yep. right? So I'm, I'm definitely going to, you know, like I enjoy Thonic a lot, just mm -hmm. sort of in my day-to-day -day life. Probably more than, or Primordial, for example, that's a band that I am drawn to because they do sort of manifest that more, there's more extremity there, there's right. more intensity. Right. So that, but that's just like a personal judgment call. That's Fair just enough. something I like. Whereas Moon Sorrow, a band I adore, can be a lot, yep. sometimes yep. a lot softer and yep. more atmospheric yep. and sort of deal with um, more delicate textures. Back to some of the comments on the boards. Oh, wow. uh, Garada Perro, España is back. Mago de Os, for sure. 25 wow. years of folk metal. I for sure don't know this band Thank at you all. for that. Time to do our research. Absolutely. Roll up our sleeves. Mm -hmm. Gustav Scarimo, add some Swedish bands. Vintersorg is a very Grimnor. good choice. Uh, Vindersorg is for sure a great choice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and again, like definitely do, um, you know, Swedish bands tend to be conflated with Viking metal bands. A lot mm -hmm. of, you know, because mm -hmm. the, there's, there can be some um, like sonic and textural overlap yep. there, but I yep. definitely think like uh, um, Vindersorg is a, is a good, okay. is a good suggestion. I'm, I'm going to leave it at yeah, you. Sure. We've got two All blank right, cards. Do Who it. do you want to put up there? Is it Mel do, and maybe Vindersorg and Melakesh? I think so. I think that's what I want to do. 
You're seeing it happen here you first, are. people. I hope I spelled all of that correctly. Okay. There we go. So should I put them way down here at sure. the bottom? Sure. Let's create a nice straight it. line Boom. and make Daniel work on camera. Okay. And you know what? Oh, just, oh. just for international relations. Oh boy. There you go. You can have it. Okay. <laughs> With that bold move, and by staving off uh, international Viking <laughs> conflict, I just don't want to. Natalie Zed has added corporate climbing to the chart, <laughs> and that brings us to yet another conclusion of Lock Horns. First of all, I want to thank you, Natalie Zed, for your thank time you with so us in the Bangor Bar. Me. Thank you very much. I've been belled. What happened? We forgot to ask one last important question. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. In order to add this to the tree, we yes. need to find where it connects to the current tree. Oh my oh Can we goodness. quickly, can we quickly oh get Natalie to weigh in on what genre we should draw a line from to connect folk metal to our current tree. So, so, hmm, this is a really, really good question. Sorry to really, no, no, bring that sure. on you at the last minute. Doom metal, but. a little bit of doom metal, a little bit of early UK metal. Yeah. With Ze I'm thinking more, maybe a bit of Zeppelin, a bit of prog, possibly, mm -hmm. where we have bands yeah. like Rainbow. Rainbow, I was just going to say a little Zeppelin. I, what else have we got? Considering the here? origin point, oh God, the whole chart's coming out here. I yeah. see some connection between progressive rock I definitely and see folk some, metal. Because right. up there we've got bands like Genesis, Mahavishnu Orchestra, Uriah yeah, Heap. Absolutely. These were bands. Even King Crimson. Stories. King Crimson. For sure. Great example. Mm -hmm. Maybe early metal UK, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin. I think there's a there's a sharing of sensibility in mm -hmm. some of those bands. We've also yep. got Rainbow there. The internet so, says power metal. Power metal. Oh yeah, I for think sure. A fair case. No, I think there's for sure a fair yep, case for yep. that for power metal as well. And and the line. So the, if so, are we drawing the line kind of from early UK metal maybe through power metal to folk? Could do, and maybe progressive rock. We find a way to connect that. If as that well. could be, if that could be integrated in there, I would be really happy to. Okay. And then I think the line uh, to Viking metal definitely looks a lot like that, but comes down through a Bathory way. Yeah, it comes down through black metal. Yeah, perhaps. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I would be comfortable with that. Well done, drawing. We'll, we'll do Great. another thank you, Natalie Z, for is joining super us fun. on Lock Horns. Mm -hmm. Thanks to everyone out there for contributing, <laughs> and please remember to subscribe to Banger TV if you want to see the first international digital all metal channel. I want to thank everybody off camera: Daniel, Lisa, Sam Sutherland, Lana, and Andrew. This show will be archived and up on Banger TV in a matter of moments next week. It's really special. We're doing prog metal. We've got Dan Briggs from Between the Buried and Me joining me in the studio to debate prog metal. And this one is going to get complicated because we've had a lot of discussion already about that. And not only that, but we're both bass players. So it's going to get really nerdy. Okay, and it's at a special time, 12.30 Eastern as opposed to 2. 12.30 Eastern next week, prog metal with Dan Briggs Between the Buried and Me. Thanks, everyone. See you next time on Lock Horns. Thanks so much.